If you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you know I don't talk a lot of theory. I try to show you exactly what's going on physically so you can understand how something operates and functions. Well, today we're going to take a look at one more little thing on the inside of a carburetor, especially the Edelbrock carburetor here, to see how it works. And we're just going to have to cut something up and uh, show you what happens when, uh, when uh, things are working or not working inside the float bowl of an Edelbrock carburetor. Let's go. What I love about doing these videos is showing exactly what's going on inside a carburetor because really what it boils down to is, well, quite a long time ago, I had a, a high school shop teacher that taught me exactly how to kind of think through a, a problem and how to work through it. And the best way of problem solving is to understand the basics of how something works and how something operates. If you have that understanding, it becomes much easier to figure out what the problem is and what you can do to help fix it. And that's the reason why I spent the time to cut apart all these Edelbrock carburetors and pieces and components of it so you can visually get an understanding of the pathing of fuel, how things are connected together, what the channels look like. All of those things become important when you're trying to determine, okay, I'm getting this reading on an AFR, uh, I've tried changing rods and jets and step-up springs and adjusting the secondary timing and the, the flap on the AVS. Quite a number of, of adjustments you can make, but if you're still struggling with it, you'll at least understand how the thing is put together and whether or not those things are going to affect what you're working on. And like I said, we've covered a lot of these little things with, you know, by milling down the front of the carburetor so we could see the channel from the accelerator pump up to the nozzle, how the transfer slots and the idle screws are, are in there and, and where the, the uh, ports are for the vacuum. All those things are really, really critical and really, really interesting to see. And, and when you understand how it's all kind of put together, helps you kind of get a visual of what's going on and, and how to uh, uh, address problems that you're having or think through any issues that, uh, that may be occurring. Now I'll link some of these videos down in the description so you can take a look at. Some of these I don't, we haven't really covered too much yet, uh, but that was one area that we haven't covered too extensively. And it kind of took me a little bit of time to kind of figure out how I wanted to attack it. And I don't know that I have the best solution, but I'm gonna show you what I put together to uh, take a look and see what happens inside of a float bowl. This carburetor is a bit of a Frankenstein. It is a Carter uh, main body. I threw an air horn assembly on uh, because the Carter one was trashed. Trashed, but what we did with this one is uh, I ended up cutting a hole or cutting a side out of it here uh, and was able to figure out a way to epoxy in some Lexan. Did a horrible job of it, but we're not gonna talk about that. And uh, so we can see what the float level looks like in there what it looks like in there at what different settings that we set the float and how that affects everything else within the system. If you remember back to this cutaway we just talked about is you've got the primary jet that's down there and that's what it's feeding. The primary jet is this angle down here and float level certainly affects how much fuel is in this channel going from the float area uh, or the fuel bowl up the channel into the booster. Now the fuel left level has to be high enough, which is the reason why we have a spec on the floats of where to set it. So the booster can be submerged in fuel so it will draw up in there. And that's the reason why float level is so important. But those are critical pieces. And when you set it too low, uh, you can set the uh, booster or the float so it's, so it's not providing the booster enough fuel on the primary side. And it certainly can affect 
how it's operating. Same on the secondary side as well. So that's what we're going to look at today. And uh, we'll start uh, adding some fluid and see what happens on this carburetor and start talking about uh, conditions that you may or may not be having and how to address them. Also on the top side here, I have a hole drilled in this air horn assembly. Again, uh, this was a junk air horn assembly. There was nothing else I could do with it. Uh, but that hole will allow me to uh, get a light down in there, which will help uh, us take a look at float level uh, and uh, take a hopefully take a look and see what it looks like there on the uh, accelerator pump well, uh, as well as uh, give me a way to fill it full of fuel or fluid uh, so we can kind of uh, uh, fill it up to the level we want without taking the air horn assembly on and off a bunch of times so i think it'll be good enough for what i want to try to show you today and then uh yeah we can just kind of run down the uh list of things we want to cover and talk about and uh, we'll get started right now first thing we want to tell you kind of take a look at here is what that float level looks like or how the float rises as fuel is added. So I've got my fuel here. Uh, we're gonna fill it through the top and just kind of watch how the float reacts, whatever. Uh, but uh, when it gets to its um, when it gets to its setting, we'll shut the fuel off and uh, uh, see what it looks like. Okay, there it is completely up against the stop. So that's all the fuel level that you're carrying on the inside of that. It doesn't look like a lot because, well, quite honestly, it isn't a lot. Fuel line's right there on a 7 16 measurement. Honestly, when you look at what that how much you're carrying in there and you look to see what's on the inside, that's not a lot. The reason why that 7 16 level is important is because it is just enough to submerge the bottom side of the booster and be able to give it some fuel to draw in there. Now, I had to tap it a little bit to make sure that that float raised a little bit level. That uh, little goopy stuff on the inside was a little much, but gives you an idea of what that fuel level looks like in the bowl when it's at that 7 16 level. If you go higher than that, then it's going to start to raise the fuel level so it starts to pull and drop fuel out of the booster. So we're going to do that next. I'm going to take that float level and I'm going to set it up pretty close to the, the top of the uh, uh, air horn assembly. And let's look what it looks like when, it's, when you have too much fuel in that float uh, bowl. Because that's certainly a common question I get is how much... How much fuel can you carry if you're trying to, you know, run on a little bit more performance application? But I do, I have gotten that question is, can you, is 7 16 the limit? Can you raise that to carry more fuel in there? Well, let's take a look and see what that looks like. Let's not even measure that. Let's just uh, bend that down so it's certainly uh, pressing up against there much, much higher. Yeah, it's certainly... Uh, Way less than that. It's probably an uh, eighth of an inch or so, maybe quarter of an inch, something like that. So let's see what that looks like under uh, uh, when it's uh, in the bowl. One little detail here is just really, if you haven't seen how much fuel is in the bowl when uh, you remove the air horn assembly and all that, if you haven't paid attention to it, there's really not a lot in there. It's just a very small, minute amount. So the pump and the regulator, uh, whatever pressure you have that set to, is always constantly pushing fuel into here uh, because you're not carrying a ton of it. You're carrying just a very small amount. It doesn't need a lot to operate. And uh, again, that's going to change here quite a bit when we uh, <laughs> go with the different fuel level. But I wanted you to see that a little bit. Okay, let's add a little bit more feel to it, see how that comes up. I did lose a little bit of level in there monkeying around with it, so that float's going to come up quite a bit. See, it's still jumping. All right, we've reached, we've reached max level there. So you can see how much more fuel we're carrying in there. Now, what does that do to the boosters? But what that does to the booster is you are pushing fuel further up the draw tube for the fuel in the in the uh, booster uh, coming up through. Again, remember we looked at the jet, how that uh, slot uh, channel ran up to the booster well uh, and where it draws fuel from. You are now submerging these way more than uh, what uh, 
it's needed. So the problem with that is you're going to draw more fuel. You're gonna draw it much richer. Uh, you're gonna go dead fat on the AFR if you're monitoring that way. A lot of black smoke out the back, darker read on the plugs. So uh, again, it may seem like a good idea, but at the end of the day, you're just what you're doing is you're just pushing too much fuel uh, through a system that doesn't require that much to be in there. Now, one other little thing is I didn't prime the accelerator pump. Let's see if that moves down, how much that, if it moves at all. I don't think we're going to see that much. Let me go ahead and see if I can give it a shot. Priming the system now. There's my first shot of fuel. And it did, it did drop fairly significantly. So that tells you how much that works, but the accelerator pump is not working all the time. You are getting that pump shot uh, on initial startup. Uh, if you pump the pedal, you're getting it off idle as you're rolling through the throttle. Uh, so again, just, it's good to see because you saw the fuel line drop and I didn't expect it to be that dramatic. It fairly was, so that was kind of cool to see. Uh, but it certainly gives you an idea of what uh, what that looks like when that pump shot occurs. Now that we've got this one done, uh, let's do this at a half inch level and we can see how uh, that uh, line dips down because half inch is one of those uh, fuel levels that we use fairly frequently, especially in hot climates where you're suffering a lot from uh, heat soak and uh, boil over uh, into the system. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how far that drops down. So let's take a look at that next. Before I drain this out of here, uh, let's pop this booster out of here because I want to show you uh, where that fuel level is uh, in reference to the pickup points. Uh, we can do that um, uh, with all these. So I'll, I'll, I'll go back and redo that so you can see it at uh, the 7 16th level. But let's take a look at this one where the floats that way too high to see where that difference is at. I think it's going to be kind of difficult to, to look at that, but you can kind of see um, where that's at. That level is really, you know, it's not that far off, maybe a eighth of an inch or so. Let's see if we get some light down there. Maybe a little bit more. It's a little bit more. It's probably a eh, quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more. So it's kind of hard to, to see that. But you can see the level up there. And I don't know, hopefully it'll be a little... Uh, Something we can see a little bit better when uh, when it's dropped down. So anyway, that's at the uh, float level being way too high. Here is the half inch setting. Try to yeah, I did. I slightly overfilled it. That's okay. Still gives you a good uh, reference of where we're at. It did drop significantly lower, but that shows you the difference between, well, the ridiculous uh, level we had in there and the level we have now. Based on how the boosters are picking up fuel out of there, that's what we're really concerned about here. Really, at this point, you know, uh, you know, if you're trying to cure something like heat soak or boiling over in the carburetor uh, shut off. There's better ways of doing it, but certainly carrying a little less fuel helps. But uh, yeah, now let's uh, pop that back off. Let's take a look at the booster and see if we can see it, uh, the level drop down in there. This one is probably a little difficult to see on camera, but it certainly dropped. Now this you can do yourself. You can set these float levels uh, on your own and then pop a booster off and see you know, what that looks like and what that drop level is. But again, all we're trying to do is, is, is give enough um, area for the booster to pick up fuel and meter it through it properly. And again, when it's uh, too exposed or too full, you can run into some situations where you're pulling fuel uh, where you don't want it to be pulling from. Let's also take a quick look at uh, the level there based on where we're at on the accelerator pump well. Hopefully you can see that. So we're just touching the the bottom of that well. But again, once the float's in there, it takes up some space. That level rises and uh, it will be covered uh, and, and be able to provide enough fuel in there. As long as the pump is working correctly, uh, regulator's flowing, and uh, 
fuel lines are doing what they're supposed to be doing, then it should be good to go. But yeah, it's just interesting to see at that half inch level how low we are. And again, that's something you can see as well too when you take the carburetor uh, air horn assembly off uh, without draining the carburetor, uh, you'll be able to see all these on your own, verify that. Let me do one last little thing here. Let me see what we can see. Yeah, I think we'll be clearer this way. So you can see that water level with the endoscope down there. It's kind of interesting. It's right below the right below the line. Let me do this. Let me uh get some food coloring. Let me just toss a couple drops of food coloring down there and see what we can see. Alright. Yeah, kinda. Let's see if we can eh, I don't want to mix it up too much. I think I got some on the side there, but you can kind of see the line there. So it's just below the below the level of uh, getting into the uh, accelerator pump. Uh, anyway, that's the danger of running it too low. If uh, you're running it uh, the the float level too low, you're going to affect having the uh, accelerator pump circuit fed. Let me shake that up a little bit. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you can kind of see it. I'm going to tilt the carburetor backwards like it's launching off the starting line. And you can see the level drop and come up. So it's just right at that level where yeah, maybe it's peaking a little bit in there. Yeah, I guess it is. I guess it's peaking just a hair in there. But you certainly could uh, put, set that float lower and uh, you would certainly starve that accelerator pump. Good info to see and uh, good info to know. I think they gave us the visual we were looking for. Um, able to see what uh, the different float levels look like and how much fuel is in there and certainly a little bit with the booster and the accelerator pump well. I like the visual. I like what we learned. I like what we saw. I like uh, uh, certainly what uh, we're able to apply it down the road. And uh, yeah, certainly... You know, the fuel level inside these bowls and these carburetors, it doesn't change drastically. That 7 sixteenths to half inch, it's not like you're adding, you know, a, you know, half a gallon of fuel in here. You're talking really grams worth of fuel that you're, that you're adding uh, with those changes. So it's not much, but certainly it can affect the operation of the carburetor and always sticking to the 7 sixteenths uh, on the float level. And then the 15 sixteenths on the drop is a really good uh, place to begin. And uh, if you want to try to play with it, just remember that every adjustment has its potential consequences that you have to figure out. And anyway, I'm going to uh, get this cleaned up and put it back in the, the bin with uh, all the other uh, demonstration pieces that I have. And I think it'll be a good one in case uh, we run into any situations where people have questions about how things operate. And yeah, I, uh, again, I, I like these because it uh, gives me the perspective and it gives you the perspective of things that you haven't seen before. And again, I think knowing and understanding how something is put together, how it works, makes you far better at chasing down problems and, and finding solutions. So if you have any questions on this one, don't hesitate. Leave them down below. Happy to answer them for you. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Unfortunately, these types of videos don't get a lot of views. Uh, for whatever reason, but I hope the few of you that stuck around to watch this entire video, uh, I, you're my people. You you're, you're want to learn and you want to absorb things, and I certainly appreciate that very much. So uh, uh, hope you guys got something out of it, and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. We'll see you.